We begin tonight with Russian forces closing in on Ukraine's capital and the defiant words from Ukraine's President Zelensky saying they will come here only if they kill us all. The UK government reporting the bulk of Russian forces are now within 15 miles of the center of Kyiv and this new video from the coastal city of Mariupol. The Russian tanks, marked with the letter Z, firing on an apartment building. The extent of the damage to the besieged city can be seen from these satellite images. This photo taken before the war, and this one taken after the recent shelling. And here you can see devastation in the southeast of the country. Residents sheltering in basements, the city above reduced to ruins. Ukrainian officials releasing this video they say shows an outspoken mayor allegedly kidnapped by Russian forces. Today, residents taking to the streets, demanding his release, chanting to the occupiers, shame on you. As Russian forces continue to bombard residential areas, growing concerns tonight about how to evacuate the remaining civilians. ABC's Maggie Rowley leading us off from Ukraine. Tonight, a defiant Ukrainian President Zelensky warning the Russians they would have to carpet bomb Kyiv and kill all of its residents if they wanted to take the city. Saying if that is their goal, let them come. The Ukrainians resolve unwavering on the 17th day of this conflict as Russian forces bear down on the capital. We will fight from every basement. They will lose tanks every street, every block, every crossroad. According to the UK Ministry of Defense, the bulk of Russian ground forces are now within 15 miles of the city center. On the outskirts of the capital, 14-year-old Katerina and her family ambushed by Russian soldiers as they tried to flee. She says, we were driving down the main road and they just started shooting at us. Satellite images show that Russian convoy, once 40 miles long, has dispersed, likely to support an attempt to encircle the city or reduce its vulnerability to Ukrainian counterattack. Zelensky saying his country has dealt the biggest blow to the Russian army in decades. A U.S. official saying as many as 6,000 Russian soldiers have died, another 15,000 wounded since the war began. Russian President Vladimir Putin speaking with the leaders of France and Germany today. President Macron and Chancellor Scholz urging an immediate ceasefire and a move toward a diplomatic solution, vowing more sanctions. As concern grows, Putin may resort to chemical weapons if he fails to make significant gains on the ground. Ukraine knows the utter devastation Putin's forces are capable of. New images from the besieged city of Mariupol. Russian tanks with that Z marking bombarding residential areas. This apartment building hit. The mayor there calling it Armageddon. In this hospital corridor, unspeakable loss. Anastasia losing one child, clinging to the one that survived. Through her tears, she says, I don't know where to run to. Who will bring back our children? To the north, residents in Volnavaha huddled in basements for weeks, sheltering from the heavy fighting, while above ground, their city reduced to ruins. And in Mikolaev, the strategic southern stronghold just east of Odessa, more rounds of shelling. Video circulating on social media showing several explosions near an apartment complex there today. Blasts also striking near a playground as a man ducks for cover. The region's governor, Vitaly Kim, sitting down with us remotely just moments after his city came under fire overnight. We have uh, been shot, no, bombed uh, in, in a rocket attack. We have uh, damages in the private sector, the civilian sector, damages in electricity, uh, heat and uh, gas. Ukrainians say the blast hit a cancer hospital with several hundred patients inside. We have no choice. We have to and to fight. With Mikolaev under fire, a daring operation by Aerial Recovery Mission, an American organization that's working alongside the Ukrainian government. 35 orphans picked up under the cover of darkness after spending eight days trapped in a bomb shelter. You could see it in their faces as soon as they saw on the bus. They're all weaving. I'm just glad they're safe. Just glad they're safe. These kids now safe in a shelter in Lviv. But for many Ukrainian leaders like him, they say their only choice is to stay and fight. Do you ever think about leaving? Would you ever leave? Yes, I thought about uh, leaving, but I, don't, I can't do this because this is my city, my region, and my people and my land. So I can't do this. 
that defiance we've seen over and over again. Let's get to Maggie Rooley in Lviv. Maggie, safely evacuating civilians from these besieged cities is still a major concern, but you're learning more about desperate efforts to get much needed aid into those hard hit areas. Yeah, where there are still hundreds of thousands of people trapped in cities. And tonight, in a last-ditch effort, President Zelensky has announced that priests have volunteered to lead a humanitarian convoy into that hard-hit city of Mariupol. Uh, they're essentially using themselves as human shields, trying to protect against a Russian attack. But wait, recent reports show that as of this moment, no convoys have yet to make it inside that city. And what we're also learning tonight from a senior U.S. official uh, that if this war continues to escalate like it has been, they're expecting to see 8 to 10 million refugees. And they say that the world doesn't have enough resources to support that number. Wait. Just an extraordinary crisis, Maggie. Thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.